Uh, I don't know what to do because it's your ship. Stay or go. May I have a moment to think about this? No. Stay or go. What do I do? They're obviously more advanced. Stay or go. Come on, I don't know forever. Should we stay? Because we shouldn't let them get to us and scare us. Stay. I'm sorry to say, but my captain has told me that, unfortunately, we are staying. This is bad. Hello? Okay. Captain, oh. captain. Full shields, full shields. Weapon launch, captain from service. Okay, full shields. Full shields. Call Copernicus. I love coming to work every day. I mean, this is the best job in the world. I get to fly around in space. We get to throw kids into dangerous situations. Sometimes they blow up, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they live, sometimes they die. And if you'd ask me, even at BYU when I was a student there, you know, I mean, do you think you're going to end up running five spaceships as a career? No, my career path was teach, principal, live, die, you know, just what everyone else thinks they're going to end up doing. And I'm the director of the Space Center here in Pleasant Grove. Well, the Space Center was founded in 1990 with this space simulator Voyager. It was never meant to be a field trip site. That simulator was only meant to be part of our young astronaut club. The reason we have five simulators now is because whenever I could find an inch or two of unused space in the school, we would grab it. This is the Odyssey, and the Odyssey will hold eight people. This was the second ship that was built. And then over here is the Phoenix. And if we move this direction, this is the Magellan, and it's also the school's computer lab. After school, weekends, and summertime, we use it as a space station set. So we've slowly assimilated parts of the school here and there, and perhaps someday when no one's looking, we'll just take over. <laughs> it will be assimilated into the collective. <laughs> Notice that the school's library sits right next to the Odyssey simulator, so they share a common wall, which is a constant source of grief for me, because a librarian is very, very bothered by any noise. She can tolerate children only, and so when there's an explosion in the ship or when music is playing, you know, she'll, even though it's very soft in the library, she'll come over and she'll pound on the doorway between the two to let the flight director know that you're too loud. So we have to deal with that all the time. This is the school's cafeteria. And this is our little ship, Galileo. And we're gonna get a new Galileo that'll replace this one sometime this summer. I don't know what we'll do with this one. Half spaceship, will travel.
camera much. This is a Voyager simulator. This is the um, records and science station over here. This is the communications level. There's our little Borg alcove light. These are stations where we can feed information to the kids as we create the story. And these things, you know, they add a lot of fun for the kids. You know, computers are one thing, but kids really do like getting in here and switching the buttons off and on. We call this decontamination. And this is also how the kids actually come into the ship. You try to provide a bit of a transition to take them from the outside world into our science fiction world. And so this kind of provides that. So they'll come through this door, down this hall, down through the crew quarters, up the spiral stairs, up to the bridge, and that kind of separates them from reality. And here's the brig. And the kids are great. I mean, you tell them this is a force field and the kids will not cross it. I mean, the intruders will stay right here and our actors are trained to give them the feel that they can't get through this force field. And if the actors are playing the part, the kids will play the part. <laughs> you know, they will not go through here knowing that those lights are on. And you really don't have to tell them because kids' imaginations are wild anyway and they will play along. Then you start the process of hitting all the OKs. Going very last, so I'm going to stuff you right here for now. Here, one, two, three. Okay, the rest of the boys, you're hustling here, quick. All right, folks, you're going to have to look at me and listen. This is our transporter. The transporters have been on the blink today. We're going to test that out on these two folks right here. <laughs> you are the toughest, the baddest, the meanest on the, on the, on the whole ship. I'm going to open the door. You're going to step inside the transportation device. It's going to ship you up to the, up to the space station. The door is going to open up very fast. You're going to step out. When you step out, you're going to tell them we're coming by saying, we're the, we're the security guards for the Voyager. I want to hear it. Go. I want to hear it. We're the security guards for the Voyager. No, no goofy stuff. You're serious. Go. One, two, three. We're the security guards for the Voyager. And do one more thing. Go. No, I want to see the eyes. Well, we're going to Get test it out with the three of you now, so all right. All right. Okay. okay. Oh. A student taught here. Carl Sagan's Cosmos was on television back then, and he flew in this star-like little craft and went out to see the things he was telling us about in the series. It was Cosmos that got it started, but it was the Star Trek stories that I'd remembered as a kid that kind of took it that next step, where we could integrate not only the science of Cosmos and Sagan, but we could also integrate the social studies through the Star Trek approach into one production. You're in the middle chair. What do you say to your friend? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you can take it off. All right, everybody, stop. Look at me. Let's go over the rules for this ship. Rule number one, this is just like the Star Trek movie many of you have seen. First officer, captain, and our job is to provide them with good information. You see how this works. We do our jobs well, the ship has a chance for success. We don't do our job well, and it could be mission failure. Captain, it'll take us a minute to get started, so if there's anything you'd like to say to your crew, a little blast off speech or words of encouragement, you can talk to them like that. I'm sure you'll do fine. How do you know? Go for it. <laughs> With you, I don't know. Oh, be quiet. I mean, oh, sir, be quiet, please. Engine room to the bridge. Engine room to the bridge. You've got a text to hear me out there, Captain. Yeah. Captain, I'm the chief engineer of your ship. I work in the engine room, which is located at the very bottom of the ship. I'm wondering, considering that you're kind of new at this, would you mind me give you a little bit of extra help and advice? Sure. Captain, I'll do whatever I can to make you look good in front of the crew. 
To get to Paracoid quickly, we're going to have to drop into hyperspace. So sure. you call out Michaela's name. Michaela? She says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You say warp speed. Warp speed. Give her a number, Captain, and we're on our way. Three. And she says? Yes, sir. <laughs> The initial grant was for sort of a spaceship that would stay locally, but I didn't get the bang that I was after. I knew that it, would it was time to do something different, and that is create more of a sci-fi approach to it and go deep into the galaxy. Conflict naturally arises, as in any good story, you've got the good, the bad, and the ugly. It sucks the kids in. It sears the impressions into their memory. And it just goes from there into serious conflict. Captain. Yes? Picking up his press call, two scientists in a city under heavy attack requested immediate rescue. Great, beam them up. Beam them up. Beam them up. Captain, we can't beam them up. We're at the moon, they're on the planet. We're too far away. Captain, do we sit out here at the moon or go in? Captain? Um, Captain, I have an idea. Yes? All right, here it is. They don't want this, right? Okay. We take our ship, we go to Paracoin, we stay long enough to bring the two scientists and teleport them into the ship. Once we have our two scientists, Caitlin sets a course for home, and we run like cowards. Now, here's my thinking. They'll probably follow us. And if they follow us, that will stop the attack on the Paracoy because they'll come after us Perfect. instead. Now, Captain, the whole plan works. If Jordan can give us enough power in the warp engines for Warp 9. Okay, warp if nine, not, we're probably power. dead. Nine, Do you want to try it? Yes. We're on our way. Vincent, go tell uh, go tell the Odyssey we'll be done in ten minutes. Their weapons are stronger than ours. They know more about the destruction. They see us. Look, they're turning their fighters in our direction. No, they who's in charge of the weapons? I am. Okay. Um, where are they? Where are they? Captain, look at the map. Look what they're doing with their fighters. They're making a circle around the area. They're going to try to cut off any escape. Science is launching. What? What was that? We need Jane Jones. We need Jane Jones. We need Jane Jones. Let us come and welcome you. Which way would that be? We just lost the weapon system. It's over. We can't outrun them. Ambassador, we're now to give you two choices. Choice one. Continue to run. We continue to fire. Your ship explodes. Or choice two. Surrender. We guarantee you will all live. You will be sent to work in the mines until the end of your lives. You have one minute to decide. One minute, okay. No way, Jose! Captain, it's up to Caitlin. She'll have to bring the crew over. Now, Captain, we have to stay at Warp 6 until we're sure we have them all. Once we get them all, we have to go to Warp 9. Jordan. What? I want you to transfer all power from the impulse engine and put that power into the warp engine. We have to be ready for warp nine. Okay, hey, get everyone on board. board. Okay, start beaming. We are. I am. Okay, do it. Captain, Caitlin yes. will tell us as soon as she has everyone. We don't have them all now. We have to wait for her okay. Okay, we got a minute left. We don't have them all, Captain. Captain, look at the map. 
Our ship has to be on the other side of that white line. We cannot increase speed though until we're sure we have them all. Go to stars, pause. Tell me when you have them all, okay. Okay. We've got a problem. We got a problem with the engine. Back to six. Back to six. Hold on. Six. Down to six. Down to six. Yes, sir. All right. Incoming torpedoes. All right, Captain. Try warp nine. Warp nine. Warp nine. Warp nine. Warp nine. Warp nine. Go, go, go. Warp nine. Go, go. 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 Go, We'll talk about your mission briefly. Okay, first of all, we have three strikes. Now, Captain, the average score for a sixth grade class is four strikes. You did well. But that doesn't tell us whether you win or lose the mission. You had to discover who or what the gods were, a chief. You had to discover what the choosing was. You did. And to win this mission, you had to stay alive until the end, achieved barely. Troops, you've met all of our objectives, give yourselves a hand, you won the mission. All right, now troops, it's time to send all of you back to reality. We're gonna ask you all to please stand up and take off your uniforms. Any organization that caters to field trips to kids, you'll always get a whole bunch of talk. You know, well, we have these objectives and these things and we want the kids to learn these things. But in reality, you know, where the rubber hits the road is that I only have kids for four hours in their life. You know, that's it. And that has created the philosophy of this. The philosophy is to give them an emotional experience because if they can get an emotional experience, it'll stay with them forever. Just a knowledge-based experience is like going to a class and listening to a lecture. You know, at the end of a lecture, you walk out and you hope you can remember it long enough to take the test. And once the test is taken, you are finished with that. I don't want that to happen here. I want them to feel something when they're here. Well, it got us out of school work. Maybe it's a mistake schools make, is they separate all the disciplines, when in life, the disciplines are never separated. Humans are like that. We, we love a broad variety of things, and they're all meshed up inside of our brains. If you had fun, you And why should a field trip approach only be science, or why should it only be the arts? You know, why can't they mix together? Not all the time, of course, I mean, it won't work all the time, but there are ways where you can blend all of these disciplines into something. I want kids to get excited about space and what they can do in the future, and that's the best we can do in four hours. <laughs> 